I've never imagined I would see this in my lifetime. So many bodies from a short period of time. These are scenes from a recent burial at a Jewish cemetery in New York. The deceased died of COVID-19. The virus has hit New York's ultra-Orthodox Jewish communities particularly hard. It's not in Iran and it's not in Syria. It's not what you ever see on YouTube from, from different uh, countries where you see bodies lined up. This is New York. Doctors and funeral directors told us they estimate hundreds of ultra-Orthodox Jews have died in Brooklyn alone. This video from late March shows bodies lined up inside a funeral chapel in Borough Park, a neighborhood with the highest number of COVID-19 cases in Brooklyn. Avraham Berkowitz is a Hasidic rabbi who lives in nearby Crown Heights. He recently attended the funeral of a family member from his car. They told the families they were not allowed to come. They had to stay only a few people and be at a distance. So tragic. He's recorded at least 39 fatalities in his neighborhood alone. Life has completely stopped in the last few weeks in Crown Heights. The sirens and ambulances, uh, heart-wrenching. The coronavirus is posing unique challenges to these close-knit communities. We belong to a community that thrives on physical proximity and constant interaction at weddings, at bar mitzvahs, three times a day at the prayer. We go to the same kosher restaurants, the same grocery stores, our kids go to the same schools. We all meet each other, know each other, and it's one interactive circle. Now, long-standing traditions are being upended by social distancing guidelines and are having to be rethought on the fly. People are holding virtual bar mitzvahs and attending drive-by weddings. As well as funerals. For your safety and that of so many others. Rabbis and community leaders are telling people to stay home. Follow what God says and you stay at home. We are fighting an invisible enemy. Some people don't take this very seriously, but it must be taken very seriously. They're urging followers to heed authorities' calls to practice social distancing, especially among prayer groups. You must disperse. You must disperse. The hospitals that serve these communities have also had to adapt quickly because of the recent surge in patients. Dr. Sarah Rosenell is a cardiologist at Maimonides Medical Center in Borough Park. We have over 400 patients that we're treating for COVID, and we have transformed every single uh, place to become an ICU to treat them. Maimonides has banned almost all visitors, including family members, unless death is imminent, which can make it hard for families to reach their loved ones in time to recite customary prayers. There was this 97-year-old Hasidic Holocaust survivor, already intubated, and his heart was not beating anymore. So we had to do chest compression. So there was an aide who was at bedside, and he had his phone on speaker, and the phone on speaker was prayers from the family member. And this is how this patient was able to die with dignity and still following the Jewish law. Stories of people dying alone, without proper rights, drove community members to come up with another solution. For Yiddish, please press one. For English, please press two. We got a lot of complaints that the hospitals wouldn't let any family members in. How can we say final prayers if the people are dying alone? Mayor Berger is the director of operations of the Jewish Burial Society, Chesed Shel Emes. He helped create a hotline with pre-recorded Jewish prayers meant for the final moments before death. My fellow Jew, your family very much wants to be with you in person. However, due to the current circumstances, it just isn't safe or allowed. People can have a patient wrap in a hospital, call on the hotline, and and put the, the prayers on speaker right next to the people who pass away. Traditionally, bodies are buried within a day of death. But this has proved challenging for Chesed Shel Emes because their caseload has quadrupled over the past few weeks. When I'm seeing young people leaving behind seven orphans, this is the hardest part, just thinking about the, all the families who are being left behind. 
and the families left behind are now forced to grieve alone during periods of mourning known as shivas. The whole beauty of the Jewish tradition and religion is after a person passes, you're with your immediate family for seven days, and hundreds and hundreds of people from the community come and visit you and comfort you and bring you food. Suddenly, that whole therapy, that whole ritual, that whole religious power of, of comfort, that is gone. They're locked alone with a video camera. I had to do Zoom shiva calls. The ongoing crisis has moved Rabbi Berkowitz to wage a personal campaign running medical supplies to healthcare workers. How are you? Do you need masks? Do you need... How easy is that? Okay. Let me... I reached out to every major hospital, New York Presbyterian, Methodist, Mount Sinai, every single hospital. If I wasn't helping frontline healthcare workers get the supplies they need, I would be a complete wreck. Members of the Hasidic community or the Orthodox Jewish community were shuttering the synagogues to save lives. But this virus doesn't know race, it doesn't know religion, it doesn't know color, it doesn't know borders. And if we're not going to unite in force, it's going to take us all.